to have you with us tonight, folks. Thanks for watching. The white hot spotlight of the 2012 election is on Herman Cain this evening. The pizza, mo pizza mogul uh, has been on an Anthony Weiner like media tour after Politico reported about past allegations of sexual harassment by at least two female employees during Herman Cain's stint as the head of the National Restaurant Association. After the pizza man appeared on Face the Nation, Politico's Jonathan Martin questioned him outside the studio. Here's the exchange. I have a comment about two people that you won't tell me who they are. Okay, that, that, that's like well, negotiating. And I want to comment on that because, you know, I think that, that is uh, one of those kinds of things that... Politico posted this blockbuster story on Sunday night. Then the floodgates opened. Right wing hate machine, merchant, uh, and Coulter instantly jumped to Herman Cain's defense. It's outrageous the way liberals treat a black conservative. This is another high tech lynching. Even the allegations. The words of Clarence Thomas, the Supreme Court Justice. That's right. There's nothing liberals fear more than a black conservative. This morning, Herman Cain's smoking campaign advisor, Mark Block, read a carefully worded response on this network. Herman Cain has never sexually harassed anybody. Period. End of story. Every negative word and accusation in the article is sourced to a series of unnamed or anonymous sources, and this is questionable at best. So the fun starts. Moments later, Herman Cain showed up on Fox and gave a more forceful denial. I've never sexually harassed anyone, and yes, I was falsely accused while I was at the National Restaurant Association, and I say falsely because it turned out after the investigation to be baseless. The people close, the people mentioned in that article were the ones who would be aware of any misdoings, uh, and they have attested to my integrity and my character. It is totally baseless and totally false. Never have I committed any sort of sexual harassment. Kane said he was falsely accused. With that statement, Kane proved that the validity of Politico's reporting was spot on. The Herman Cain media tour rolled on to a pre-scheduled speech at the National Press Club. In all of my over 40 years of business experience, running businesses and corporations, I have never sexually harassed anyone. While at the Restaurant Association, I was accused of sexual harassment, falsely accused, I might add, as far as a settlement, I am unaware of any sort of settlement. I hope it wasn't for much, because I didn't do anything. But the fact of the matter is, I'm not aware of a settlement. Tell you what, he's getting better as the day goes on. You can tell the Godfather's former CEO has been schooled up. But Herman Cain just said he was unaware of any sort of settlement. Shortly after the speech, Cain taped an interview with Greta Van Susteren at Fox in which he reportedly said, I don't remember a number. We ended up settling for what would have been a termination settlement. Maybe three months salary. I don't remember. It might have been two months. NBC News has confirmed one of the Cain accusers did receive a cash settlement. Later in the Greta Van Susteren interview, Herman Cain described one of the encounters which led to a sexual harassment charge. She was in my office one day, and I made a gesture saying, oh, and I was standing close to her, and I made a gesture, you are the same height as, height as my wife, and brought my hand, didn't touch it, up to my chin and said, you're the same height as my wife because my wife comes up to my chin, my wife for 43 years. And that was put in there as something that made her uncomfortable as part of the sexual harassment charge. Earlier this evening, Herman Cain was a guest on the PBS NewsHour. Judy Woodruff asked Cain if he had asked two women to his hotel room. And there was some mention of a hotel room at a convention or at a meeting. Did any one of these women, were they ever asked to meet you? Uh, I, or... That I absolutely do not recall. I, you know, I have no recollection of that. This story is less than 24 hours old, and Herman Cain's answers keep raising eyebrows. Republicans 
now have to render judgment on Kane's credibility. So far, the conservative echo chamber is circling the wagons around Herman Kane. So, Natalie, you're saying occupy Politico, in other words. They, they're occupying yeah. Wall Street. We need to occupy Politico. Exactly. We need to get people outside downtown. We need to get the camera crews there and say these people are sleeping. Stop destroying a good man. Stop destroying a good man's reputation. Rush Limbaugh is attacking the mainstream media for being racist. Look at how quickly what is known as the mainstream media goes for the ugliest racial stereotypes they can to attack a black conservative. Herman Cain is going to continue shopping for sympathy in the media on Hannity's show tonight. Hannity tweeted this out today. We are talking about Herman Cain and the attacks on him from the liberal left because he has done so well in the polls. I tell you, Sean, that's really deep. We have shown tonight just the wide array of, of answers that Herman Cain has given. This is a credibility killer. First of all, dude, you're running for President of the United States. That's what you want. You want to be the Republican candidate. Did you think that this wasn't going to come out? Are you that naive? Talk about a credibility killer. What we have seen today, in the last 24 hours, we've seen him not knowing anything to giving descriptions of what he says happened. Is that a 180? What if President Obama had any kind of an issue like that and went that far in a 24-hour period? What would the Republicans be saying? What would the right-wing media be saying? Bottom line here, this is a credibility killer. What we have is an accusation, and we have a response, and somewhere in between all of that is the truth. Okay? Attorneys get involved, insurance policies for the company and everything else. All that stuff happens, right? But somewhere in there is the truth. But we do know now for sure that Herman Cain's answers from yesterday and what they are today are totally different. Do you want that guy to be president of the United States? This has nothing to do with the color of his skin. This has nothing to do with the liberal media. It's Cain who's changing his answers. The man doesn't know. Get your cell phones out. I want to know what you think. Tonight's question. Do you believe Herman Cain's denial of sexual harassment charges? Text A for yes. Text B for no to 622-639. You can go to our blog at ed.msnbc.com. We'll bring you the results later on in the show. Joining me now is Ken Vogel, chief political reporter for Politico. Ken, good to have you with us, Senator. I appreciate your time. Hey, my uh, pleasure. Right? You know, since the report came out, what do you make of Herman Cain's changing of answers in 24 hours on a number of different venues? It's been a little ham-handed, Ed. Uh, what, what you failed to mention is that we initially approached the campaign 10 days before this story ever came out. So they had plenty of time to uh, come up with a coherent response. As you can tell, they didn't. We even approached him both uh, prior to publication as well as on Sunday uh, during that interview in which you saw Jonathan Martin uh, uh, encountering Herman Cain outside of the CBS studios with the name of one particular woman who had alleged sexual harassment. And uh, yet still, there was a failure of the campaign to both, I think, realize the seriousness of this as well as to come up with a coherent response Response that would last and be able to be sustained as this story develops. What do you say to the critics who are saying that this is a personal attack? Well, certainly we have heard from folks who have uh, wanted to know where we got this story, suggested that perhaps we got it from another campaign. And what we say to them is that we corroborated this. Regardless of where we got it, we spent a lot of time, we did dozens of interviews with both uh, former board members of the National Restaurant Association, former staffers, folks who knew these women. We actually physically examined one of these settlements, and only when we got to the point where we were extremely comfortable with the validity of this did we run with it and you see Herman Cain now admitting that there is a settlement uh, which he previously refused to do I think that's a testament to our reporting based on his answers which have changed over the last 24 hours he's gone from almost a denial to a description in his, ter in his terms as to what happened uh, is there a chance that the women would want to be identified is there a chance that maybe more would come out are you working on more stories uh, in in this genre. We continue to look into uh, strains of reporting, uh, uh, lines of inquiry that we had put out there reporting this story. Uh, as you can tell, NBC News and other media outlets also are working uh, on stories that are related to this. 
Um, and so I don't think that we've heard the last of either this story uh, or potentially Herman King's struggles in dealing with this story. And can you uh, em emphatically state tonight that no other campaign was involved in, in helping with this story? I cannot, we're not going to get into our sourcing of it. Again, what was important to us was that we were able to verify uh, the, the, uh, what was initially a very vague, uh, sort of broad contour of a story, and we were able to really put some meat on the bones and figure out precisely what happened and present it in a way that has yet to be challenged. Kane said the following after his interview with PBS. Here it is. Mr. King, why the discrepancy? At first you said there was no settlement, now you've reportedly said that there is a settlement. Why the kind of disconnect there? Uh, can you remember everything about an incident from 12 years ago? And the, and, and the other thing is, Politico said there was a settlement. I know that there was an agreement. Whether it was a settlement, agreement, or whether it was termination paper, I don't remember what it was called. So that choice of words, I'm not going to say that it's changing my tune. They use the word settlement. The Restaurant Association had an agreement with this lady. He is wordsmith in this big time. Would you agree? That's a bit of hair splitting, certainly. It seems uh, sort of semantic here. What we understood that this settlement was, was that uh, there was actually a statement of the allegations against Herman Cain, uh, and there was a, uh, uh, it was signed by the National Restaurant Association, by a representative from it, and that there was a payment of, uh, a monetary payment in the five figures with a non-disclosure agreement that forbade this woman in particular from talking about the issue issues raised in this settlement. That's one of the reasons why we have been so careful about not naming either of these two women. What's your day two story on this? Well, we started to look a little bit at the Restaurant Association. You heard Herman Cain say that there was a thorough investigation by the General Counsel and the Head of Human Resources of the National Restaurant Association. Well, we talked to the Head of Human Resources last week, and she had no clue about any of this. So that would seem to question either uh, the thoroughness or the scope of the investigation, yeah. because additionally, we talked to many, many board members, including those who were officers of the board who probably, if you're going to have an investigation like this, would be brought into the loop and made aware of it. They were not. Some of them, frankly, were a little bit upset. While some of them denied outright the possibility that this could have occurred, some of them said, huh, I really wish I would have known about this. I find it amazing that you went to him uh, some days ago and he has botched the response in, in such a terrible fashion. It makes it look like he certainly isn't ready for prime time and getting some very poor counsel throughout it all. Politico's Ken Vogel, good to have you with us tonight. I appreciate your time.